Fallout Equestria Child of the Stars Chapter 4 Part 2 I wasn't just going to leave her back at cocktails, even if I knew it would be so much easier to simply move on. A part of me wondered why he would let her go back, yet the saloon owner was an important slave, I mean, pony in the town, and I doubted his opinion would make any real impact. I sighed to myself quietly. No, I couldn't leave her. My mind wouldn't let me without twisting my insides up with guilt. But out there, she wasn't safe, even if she thought that she could handle it like last time. <sighs> Damn it, dragon, what is it with you? I cursed to myself. Then I just stopped, evaluating my plethora of problems. Firstly, I had a job to do. Secondly, I had a mare that I couldn't bring myself to abandon. And third, I had a friend that I didn't wish to disappoint. No solutions really presented themselves to my mind. Come on, Breen, you frisky little fucker. Give me some solutions. I had a home back in Chern where I could take her. Yeah, but the mental mechanism that provided the idea was equally swift at shooting it down. I had no time to backtrack. Star could be very patient, but I wasn't going to do that to him. Uh, uh. Bone Meal's interjection swiftly shook me from my thoughtful stupor, only for me to realize that all this time I had been just leaning on his counter. Stepping back with a slight hint of embarrassment, I shook my head. I'll, uh, I'll keep that in mind. Uh, sorry. I told him as he looked at me oddly. Before he could question, however, I retrieved the potions and trotted out to the door. Cherry darted after me, her shivering hoofsteps unmistakable upon their rickety wooden floors. Oh, hey, uh, so are you feeling any better? I asked, the moment we were both outside. From her shy expression, I could tell that she was still rather uncomfortable with admitting to me the whole ordeal ever happened. Nevertheless, her ears tweaked upwards at the sound of my voice. Yeah, I... thanks. She stuttered in an unemotionally monotone tone of voice. Alarm bells were already going off in my mind. I recognized what once anxiousness was swiftly developing into a noticeable depression. Damn it, Dragon, you're a mercenary, not some damn psychologist. Yet, Bone Meal hadn't been much help in that regard either. Give her some pony to talk to? I mean, yeah, I could do that, but not forever. Not for as long as she needed me to. I mean, you could do it right now, though. My mind stated dryly. I sighed. Right, of course. Hey, so you remember what I said last night, just to try and think about what makes you happy? I forced. Really, Dragon? Was that the best that you can come up with? Did you even consider the fact that you might be afraid to think about the one thing she told you to make her happy? Thank you, Brian. You're such a supportive friend. Sherry looked up at me. Thanks, but I don't think that will do me much good around. Her sentence trailed off into an uncomfortable silence as her eyes leveled up with the saloon. A portion of my anger exhibited itself as I ground my teeth in anger, the muscles in my limbs flexing and relaxing as I breathed heavily and exercised every ounce of my self-control to not storm out of the town, capture a raider, and use a potato peeler to release all of my hatred and fury for what their treatment of Cherry had done to her. I, Celestia, if I could drag Cocktail out into a raider den and see how she would like to spend a day with him, I'd be a far happier pony. She'd probably feel just at home among those scum as Mr. Red enjoyed using them like chess pawns. To be exploited to the fullest extent and then sacrificed when he no longer needed them? I assumed, at least. Oh, look, that's not the point. Regardless of my vendetta against Cocktail, Cherry still looked terrified of returning to her old place of employment. Furthermore, it seemed that she thought that she wasn't good enough for even that. If I left her here, I'd spend every moment resenting myself for plunging her back into that degrading and diffident-enhancing environment. Not only that, but I'd be leaving her to suffer alone, with the extra mental baggage of being a raider victim. I really hated that long, dormant part of my consciousness. Um, so, how did you even end up there anyway? I asked as casually as possible, dragging my thoughts away from the previous subject as I began to trot across the muddy town yard. She looked slightly shocked that anyone was even interested. Nevertheless, she began to follow me. Then she sighed, her eyes glowering at the dirt. My family were traitors. My mother, father, and sisters were all earth ponies, so it was quite the surprises when I came along. She smiled at that memory, moving along to my side instead of being my shadow. I slowed slightly, focusing my full attention on her story. I do have some skill when it comes to bartering for things like guns and, you know, other combat-related stuff. My sisters were really good with all those fine little things, locks in particular. My father taught them, and even they were earth ponies, and they could really get into anything. 
But when it came to teaching me... She trailed off and then proceeded to snigger slightly. Well, if you're taught how to handle things fine by hoof, then precise levitation only triples those skills. She appeared to be almost giddily for a fleeting moment at that latter part, like it was some great graduation. I felt strangely happy for her, even if her talent had obviously been discovered years ago. Picking locks? I had to admit, for all my magical skills and weapon tinkering, lockpicking was not something on my list of abilities. Well, not high anyway, but I mean, I'd try anything. So, say I had a safe, uh, oh, I don't know, uh, locked in a vault. Could you use your lockpicking skills to open it? I asked casually, waving the hoof in the air in a vertical, circular motion like I was turning one of those rotating vault mechanisms. For some odd reason, Griddle's micro-stable came into mind as I asked. Cherry's smirk widened, smilingly unable to hide her pride. I have cracked a few safes before. I mean, it would depend on the vault door style, its locking mechanism, and for the time constraints I've been working with. Uh, so my results will vary depending on those kinds of factors, you know, she told me. My heart fluttering again to see her become so vivacious. She was just so adorable that I could... Brain? No. I stuttered, refusing to yield whatever my thought was willful and drudged up this time. Well, it's not something I couldn't do. I admitted. But if Star asks, I'll deny it. I added with a playful fake embarrassment. Still, I could swear the pink mare laughed or at least raised a hoof to her muzzle and closed her eyes for a second. It's true. Seven years of merc work and I have never ever picked a lock. Oh, sure, you tried. My egotistical mind added swiftly, but I merely showed it away. Cherry was smiling at that enough to sustain a positive set of thoughts, and these positive thoughts held back the other less positive thoughts. So, you've been going out there for seven years? She asked, gesturing to the town gate, and I nodded. Most of my life, actually. Crossed half of the damn wasteland. I added cheerfully. Ahead, I noticed that our seemingly random walk around the center of town was directing us towards one of the structures at its edge, specifically the weapons store, aptly named Ratchets, after the sales pony I knew who worked there. I had been a customer once or twice, but the caravans that supplied this place were the same ones which supplied Turn, the latter getting the better business due to its greater size and population. So I really only ever used Ratchets store to sell up junk and repair and upgrade my own weapons. Glancing at Cherry, I realized that she'd failed to answer my question as to how she ended up here in the first place. Though, it wasn't really something I was going to force out of her. If she didn't want to tell me, then she didn't have to. A moment later, we found both of ourselves staring at the glass front of what had once been a cake store, and where once there had been savory desserts that were now many varying weapons, ammunition, and spare parts, all of which were locked behind a metal grid that covered the tattered glass from the inside. Warning. This establishment is protected by anti-magical charms. All attempted break-ins will notify the authorities. It was written in faded yellow upon the tattered pre-war sticker on the top left of the metal grid. I couldn't imagine the warning had any weight to it anymore. Not that I was going to really put it to the test. I was an opportunistic scavenger, not a straight-up thief. Not that any of the stuff in there was worth stealing anyway. Most of it was either broken, overpriced, or not even there at all. That and they were really all boring old bullet fingers. Cherry, however, was looking at the array of guns in a strangely different light. Wait, no, 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 she was looking at the guns, but also something else. I glanced around to see her expression mirrored by a dull reflection in the glass. Beside it, my own confused doppelganger looked at her. Um, are you okay? I asked carefully as the pink unicorn stared even more into her reflection. She snapped back sharply before backpedaling slightly. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, I'm uh, fine. Her words were lost in a sea of stuttering before she finally stopped and sighed. I... It's just, I saved up a lot for a chance to get out there, and when the chance for me to do something came, all I could afford was just a lousy revolver, and, well... She glared back up at the window, her reflection staring back at her with disapproving eyes. And, well, you saw where that got me. Before I could even say anything, however, she stamped a hoof on the ground weakly. The sweet sun and sugar to you were the only friends that I had in that stupid saloon, and I let them down. Just like I let everyone else down. Her voice grew slowly weaker as that final confession left her. She had to pay to help ponies? I didn't know why, I mean, considering I had to pay myself, but for some reason, that just made me furious. I could almost imagine the fabulously voiced entity of the wasteland telling her, Oh, yes, dear. You can indeed help your friends, but first, I want this and this. Oh, and that too. 
I hated that entity with a fiery passion. I stole everything from a pony, even if all that pony wanted to do was help. That's why you don't go around in being a hero. My mind warned, dousing the flames of my anger nonchalantly. All that physically left me was a grumble, then I looked at Cherry and put a hoof. Wait, no, no. I shouldn't touch her unless I can do so without expecting anything from her. I really shouldn't touch her while I have ulterior motives regarding her. I retracted my forelimb and instead lowered my gaze to hers. Good. You're in prime position. Now kiss. No, brain, no. Just shut up. She was on the verge of crying and the memory of the two mares I'd failed to save. Who could have made coping with Sherry's feelings of failure and uselessness so much easier for her was only making me feel worse. Damn it. If I hadn't gone back to Star, or if I'd not have fucked about with that mare in the alley back then, then you'd have no support or any idea where any pony was in the factory. Hey, you know what? Fuck you, Brain. I mentally hissed with the irritatingly rational and logical thought crossing my mind. Hey, uh, Cherry, look. Don't blame yourself so much. You were the only one around here who was brave enough to do something. I assured her comfortingly. She sniffed, seeming to hold back her tears. Yeah, and I got what I deserve for being so reckless. She countered in a despondent tone of voice, wiping her nose with a hoof. Oh, Celestia, where was the smiling cherry I'd seen just a moment ago? I thought to myself as my heart sank seeing her hurt like this. Damn it, Dragon! Buck up! You just got her there a moment ago! You can do it again! My mind told me firmly. Okay, so you said you wanted to get out of there and make a difference. Is that correct? I asked, hoping dearly that she would not suspect the vague chance in conversation. She looked at me, her expression almost bringing my fears to life, but then she nodded. You think I can? I pressed, trying to make my words as admirable as possible. Unfortunately, her look turned skeptical. I'd imagined her recent experiences had dashed her hopes of becoming a pony that could make a difference. So I took a step back, raising my head. Expectantly, hers slowly followed. Now we were both looking at our reflections in the glass and the guns beyond. You know, I never met anyone who can pick a lock, and I rarely find myself out on the winning end of the deal. Okay, so that last part wasn't wholly true. I can get most bucks to part with as many caps as if I wanted to if I tried. Mare's less so, but my attempts were still admirably embarrassing for those involved. Look, Cherry. The point I'm getting at this is no matter what anyone else says about this town or thinks about you, about what you did, knowing you did it means the world to ponies like me. I blurted out. The mere idea that there was someone out there, excluding myself and Star, who'd run into a raider den to help someone else occupied much of my thoughts. As I looked back to her, she appeared dumbstruck. Even her encroaching depression couldn't really hide her shock for long. I had no idea whether it was because uh, I, a big scary mercenary pony, had admitted it, or the fact that I, as a pony who wanted to do it right by other ponies, had admitted it, but she seemed to have returned to me not depressed and miserable, but curious. I, on the other hoof, must have looked like a hopeful filly who had just found their special talent and is now sure that there was nothing standing between me and the fame and fortune said talent would bring. Was I really that wrapped up in this? Saving ponies? I mean... Yeah, it was right, but I didn't want to become a paragon of goodness. I didn't want to be a hero. Cherry sighed, turning back to the glass window and pressing a hoof against it. So, do you really mean that? She asked, as if desperate for me to say yes, but expecting nothing other than a no. I took in a deep breath. Of course. Like I said, it's been a really long time since I met anyone who would do what you did. I admitted softly, scuffing my forehoof against the floor. Brain... Wait, no, this was actually me. I was behaving like this. Goddesses, now, it was like I was coming on to her or something. No, no, I, stop, stop. This was not the message I wanted to get across. I just want her to be happy and away from this stupid town. I just, Cherry, how good are you with an actual gun? A real proper thing, not really. I stopped without adding mention of that revolver she'd brought up, both because I had a nagging fear that it was the same one by which Mr. Red had used to kill her friends, and by extension, threatened to kill her, and the investment she'd slaved in that whorehouse cocktail was running for goddesses know how long to make. She glanced down over the array of weapons. Part of her seemed lost in disbelief, and the other bore a small hint of regret and guilt. Yet most of it was fought back by a firm determination my words had seemingly relighted. I did have some skills, though I was a bit rusty. I mean, cocktail didn't really let us practice, but I can shoot. Um, 
Let's see. Rifles, revolvers, obviously. Oh, and I did fire a magical energy weapon once or twice. She stated, pointing a hoof to my weapon-laden barding. I smiled warmly like she was some little fool subtly listening to all the reasons that they were responsible enough to stay home alone or looked after some wearied pet they dragged home. I looked back to the window with a sigh, my reflection looking back at me, as did those of many other firearms. Damn it, dragon fire! I cursed to myself, looking at the reflection of a white unicorn looking back at me. You better not regret this. I looked back to Cherry, noticing the long pause had caused her to deflate ever so slightly, but I was sure my next words would fix that. Cherry, what would you say if... I paused the words catching in my throat, her ears perked. Damn it, do not regret this. So, how would you like to come with me when we leave? Footnote, level up. New perk added, quick thinker, level one. You're almost as quick with your brain as you are in your hooves. Gain five plus intelligence. Companion added, cherry pin. What's taught with one's hooves is only improved by one's horn. Gain plus five to lockpicking and bartering skills when traveling with this companion.